The regc function is one of the most powerful functions in the RCPA3 package, and we use it a lot in the book. In this video, I'm going to focus on the regc function's required argument and how you use it for multiple regression analysis. This video is really a continuation of the, of the video I made showing you how to use regc for bivariate regression analysis. I will discuss residual diagnostics with regc, which comes up later in the book, in a separate video. The regc function has one required argument, formula, which is set equal to the regression equation to be estimated. We use a special syntax for formulas that you need to learn to do multiple regression with regc. The regc function supports a standard set of optional arguments. With regc, you have options to specify observation weights, the dataset name, the number of digits you want to see after decimal points, and whether you want to print your results to an HTML file in your working directory. I will discuss the ANOVA argument in this video as a measure of model fit. I will discuss RegC's other optional arguments and plot-related arguments in a separate video about residual diagnostics with RegC. To learn how to do multiple regression analysis with the RegC function, let's work through some examples together. To do multiple regression analysis with our regc function, uh, it's actually very similar to what we did with the regc function for a bivariate regression analysis. You may remember, remember for a bivariate regression analysis, we set the regc's formula argument equal to a dependent variable followed by the tilde, oops, followed by the tilde, then the an independent variable. Uh, so this is the formula that we had used. If we want to add another variable to it to make it a multiple regression analysis, uh, we would keep the same syntax and then add the plus sign and then specify an additional independent variable. So this was a regression of the peace index as a function of military spending. Um, I want to add on uh, another variable. I'll use one of the democracy measures. Um, Okay, I'll use the Freedom House Democracy Score and then uh, run this analysis. And the RegC function with two independent variables specified in the formula uh, separated by a plus gives us a, the results give us a table of the linear regression coefficients uh, with the estimates and their inferential statistics. You notice we've got both independent variables here spending military and the Freedom House Democracy score. It also reports the table of regression residuals and those would be the residuals from the multiple regressions. Excuse me. And then finally some model information uh, about model fit and and some additional information. So the multiple a regression with multiple dummy variables uh, can look like, uh, from the function call, a simple bivariate regression analysis. But the way R interprets the the function interpret the independent variable, it'll the results look like a multiple regression. Let me show you. Uh, so to run a multiple dummy variable regression using our regc function, we'll set the formula equal to. Um, I'm gonna stick with the world peace example. Uh, well, piece index example and then the tilde and then I'm going to use a categorical variable uh, region okay so like I said it looks like a bivariate regression when we run it we get results that look like multiple regression so let me just scroll up so we've got the a table of regression coefficients, a table reporting the regression, uh, summarizing the regression residuals, and then some additional information on model fit um, and, and whatnot. So back up to our table of linear regression coefficients. No, basically what it's doing is um, the function is automatically unpacking this world region variable. So the world region variable 
uh, categorizes countries in the world into eight different regions. And so the function automatically dumbifies the variable, creating eight minus one vari uh, variables, dummy variables in the regression. So there's seven uh, categories that are converted to dummy variables for the regression. So it's comparing all these categories of region to the intercept value. In a interaction relationship, uh, the effect of one independent variable depends on the value or level of another independent variable. In our analysis of the world peace index as a dependent variable, an interactive approach might say that the effect of military spending depends on whether a country is a democracy. Uh, the military spending has one effect in non-democracies and another effect in democracies. When it comes to R, the way we would do that, the most straightforward approach would be to specify the independent variable, uh, spin mill, like spin mill, and interact it uh, as a product with another variable, like the EIU democbin. In this, in this uh, world data set, this variable EIU.democbin is a binary variable. Let's take a look at it. The, a binary variable that says uh, yes or no, a country is a democracy. So this is one way to analyze an interactive relationship. Um, the interactive term is specified as a product of the two base terms. In this case, spend military is interacting with whether a country is a democracy. Take a look at this when we run it. What do we miss up here? Oops, looks like I omitted some of the variable name here. Spendmill.wdi. There we run it. It reports in our table of linear regression coefficients. Uh, in addition to the intercept, we have three rows for spend military. The effect for the so the effect of military spending, and then the effect of a country being in the yes category, uh, being a democracy, and then the interaction between the two variables, the interaction between spend military and a country being a democracy. So we might see here is that there's non-significant, uh, approaching statistical significance. Um, negative effect of military spending on the peace index and that happens to be greater if the country is a democracy and then countries that are democracies are higher in general on the peace index than non-democracies. So notice that when I included the product of the two variables on the right side of the tilde so it's the an independent variable in the regression analysis are automatically unpacked it where we're including the two base terms the, the two base terms separately as well as their product term giving me four rows in the table of results even though I have just the product term in the equation. Now I think that's all well and good for uh, the R syntax and kind of economical for the R syntax you're, you're typing less but I think in terms of interpreting the results of an interactive model. It leaves a little bit to be desired and you really have to kind of read it more carefully than you might want to read it. Uh, to make it a little bit easier on yourself you can do a little additional work. Um, what I would might suggest is creating the interactive variable more intentionally and including that variable in the regression model. So in this case I might create a new variable in the world data set that I would call spin mill democ. So it's the milit amount of military spending in democracies only. I think when I run this, I'm going to get a, uh, should get an error that telling me basically that the world, the uh, world EIU dot democ bin is coded as a factor, yes or no. And R is unable to do 
math just based on the factors. So what I will do is select the category of interest, yes, and use the logical operator. It will interpret this as a one when it's true, a zero when it's not, and rerun this variable. And, uh, take a quick look at it. So here's the interactive term. Uh, it's zero for a non-democracy and then has some positive value for a democracy. So it's showing the amount of military spending in democracies only. And then what you can do, uh, I think this makes the regression results and equation easier to understand is include the base terms in the regression equation along with along with that new product term, the interactive term. Now you can see on the right side of the table they have three equations. It's a bit more coding and takes an extra step, but here's the payoff. If you look at the table of regression results now, I think it's quite a bit easier to interpret and understand what's happening. It, what it shows is kind of straight away is that there's an effect of military spending, there's an effect of, de of a democracy, and there is effect of spending on the military in democracies. So this is the effect, that last row is the effect on the peace index of military spending in democracies, which adds to just the general effect of military spending in all countries. So additional line of coding, but I think with the interactive model, particularly if it's something new to you, uh, interactive relationships, I think it's worth the investment of a little bit of time to create the interactive variable and then include the base terms as well as the interactive variable in the model. Um, a little, little bit more work setting it up, but I think there's a payoff in that it makes the results of the estimation easier to understand and more intuitive. So regression analysis with weighter observations uh, can be done with the reg C function using the function's optional W argument uh, that's used throughout the package for weighting observations. Let me show you an example. So to do a regression analysis with uh, weighted observations, we need to write a formula, and I'm going to switch data sets here and make the formula something out of the NES data set. Let's look at the uh, feeling thermometer toward Kamala Harris after the election as a function of the feeling thermometer of individuals rate to Democrats uh, in addition to whether uh, in addition to the gender of the respondent. I'm going to do it first without weights and then with weights. So here's our multiple regression analysis the dependent variable feeling thermometer toward Kamala Harris as a function of feeling thermometer toward the Democratic Party overall and whether the respondent is a gender. So we have uh, estimates of the effect of feeling thermometer toward Democrats as well as uh, the gender effect. Now, to make this a weighted observation, so more maybe more representative of the general public, um, we would add weights using the W argument and set W equal to the variable in the data set that weights observations. Let's give this another run and we'll get should get similar looking results uh, with some changes in the coefficient estimates that might be interesting to look at. So we have no surprise, um, very positive correlation, almost a one-to-one -one correlation between uh, feeling thermometer toward Democrats and feeling thermometer toward Kamala Harris and a 1.2 increase in the feeling thermometer if the respondent is a female. But when we've added the weights, uh, it looks like the T statistic and the P value uh, indicate that uh, the, the effect is not statistically significant in this sample. It's interesting is so we contrast to the unweighted sample, we did get a statistically significant result and a slightly larger coefficient of 1.6 uh, gender difference, but that may be a product of 
um, non-representativeness in the sample because we're not seeing that when we add the sample weights. Um, that's kind of absolutely, I think, an interesting result. But uh, you know, if you do have a data set that should be weighted and you're doing a regression analysis, easy to accomplish that with reg C. Just use the W argument and set W equal to the variable in the data set that weights observations.